and this is a chapter 10 video um, and we're looking at further techniques specifically abstract classes and this is very much an abridged version of the chapter 10 in the book um, the reason being is the, the simulation which they talk about to explain abstract classes and interfaces is an extremely interesting uh, simulation looking at foxes and rabbits and how it hunts and a two-dimensional uh, representation of fields and it's, it really is um, an interesting way of, of showing it and, it, and, and if you read the chapter you'll, you'll see it gives a very good understanding of some of these concepts based on uh, working with this particular application. The problem is in the book it takes about 15 pages to explain the uh, application itself. Um, if you do have time to go back to this then I would strongly advise it because it really is uh, very useful in, in putting these concepts into sort of practice. However, we do not have time to go through through this on the course. Um, you're aware of the time constraints so we, we're, we're not going to cover that simulation in practice. Um, therefore, all of the uh, all of this chapter is based on theory, so there is no practical um, parts of this particular chapter in this version. Um, what we're going to cover is inheritance in general, a bit of a recap on that, uh, and then the term concrete classes we're going to explain. We're then going to go on and talk a little bit about abstract classes, interfaces, and multiple inheritance and how all that fits together. So let's just do a little bit of revision. First of all, why do we use inheritance? Well, really, there's two main kinds of reasons for this. The main one is the reuse of code. So we don't have to keep writing the same methods. We don't have to keep writing the same fields for types, which are all very, very similar. We can write one generic type and then have lots of subtypes and subclasses beneath that, which are similar to the uh, superclass, but um, have their own specifics, so what we can have a nice hierarchy so we don't have to reuse uh, code over and over and again. Another thing is the handy handiness of polymorphism, so we can do, um, we can work with types and subtypes and, and tr treat many different subtypes as a single type. So you've seen an example of how this is very useful when we did the previous chapter, chapter um, 9, where we stored posts uh, and those posts uh, were, uh, the subtypes of, of those posts were message types and, uh, uh, or message posts and, fo and photo posts, but ultimately we could store them all within a single collection. So it's very useful to, to store a, a higher level of type um, so that all the lower level of types can be stored. So those are the two reasons why we use it. We use them for code reuse and polymorphism. To understand the concepts in this chapter, it's, understand that you, it's important that you understand those uh, reasons for inheritance. So, let's consider a concrete class then. A concrete class is every class that you have written so far that has no, had nothing to do with um, inheritance. So, what we can do with our concrete classes, this is our normal class, our string class, any class which you can, you can create an object from it. So we can use them statically. So we can create a class called shape and so say shape x. We can also use it dynamically, so as we've seen previously, to create a new object, it will be x equals new shape, and we could have the whole thing together, so we could say shape x equals new shape. Um, subclasses can ignore superclass methods, so if you've got a, a superclass with certain methods and fields, then subclasses can ignore those fields and methods and can use them if they want to, um, or they can, uh, they can ignore them to a certain extent. Um, and the other thing about concrete classes is all methods generally have bodies. So this is not coming as news to anyone. When we write a method, generally we write a body part to the method as well. So now let's just consider abstract methods. So sometimes it's not relevant for a superclass method to have a body. And we're going to look at that and the reasons behind that in a second. Um, you, know, you now know how to store subtypes in a collection of supertypes. Um, so that, that's relevant as well in a second. So let's just consider this diagram here. Here we have, an, uh, uh, this is sort of based on the simulator um, application which is shown in the Blue Jay book. Um, but what, what we're going to show here, uh, we're going to look on the, the animal, rabbit and fox classes. So sometimes, um, if we look at the, uh, the way that the foxes act, during a simulation, they act in a certain way that they hunt during the simulation. Rabbits, the way they act is to eat grass. 
So both of these act, um, but there's no common ground between, between their behaviours. So we couldn't, for example, say uh, an animal hunts because a rabbit doesn't hunt, and we couldn't say that an animal eats grass as an eats grass method because that doesn't make sense either because a fox doesn't eat grass. So, but, but we can say that they both act, and we can use this maybe this word act. So again, you can use any word you like, this is just a, an example in this particular animal hierarchy. So what we could say is we could say that in order for an, anim an animal to exist in the simulation, it must act in some way. So therefore, any subclass of an animal must override an act method, which we describe in our, abs in our animal method. So an animal acting is an abstract idea. It doesn't actually happen. So with an animal class, we're not going to create um, an object of type animal because that, that's an abstract idea. And also, we're not going to get that abstract sort of animal to act because, again, that's an abstract idea. However, we are going to get a fox to, we are going to create a fox object from a fox class and we're going to create a rabbit object from a, a rabbit class. So it makes sense that we should create an abstract method in the animal class which must so which mustn't have any actual uh, implementation itself because it's nonsensical for it to have, have an implementation but it must force all of its subclasses to use um, that method so the act method in rabbit effectively becomes the rabbit eating grass and the act method in fox effectively becomes the hunt method so both of these classes will have some kind of act but the the method body in in the animal class shown on the screen there uh, won't actually contain anything. That's what's called an abstract method. So just a little bit about that then. Um, abstract methods have the abstract in the signature so it becomes public. Um, let's just show you in here now. So here's a, an example of an abstract method here public abstract void take off. So the idea of this is it's a spaceship based um, class. We're going to look at this in a second. I've got um, an example of a hierarchy here and a, a sort of example 2D game or the shell of a 2D game. So public abstract void take off, there's the word used there. The method mustn't have any body so this makes sense that um, a spaceship should be able to take off, however we're not going to specify that you know a special kind of rocket will take off in one way whereas a shuttle might take off in another way. So that will have to be said within, when you implement the concrete class, but the abstract class it doesn't specifically have to say it. If there is any abstract methods then it will make the class itself abstract. Um, the other thing is abstract classes cannot be instantiated, so that in the same way that we can create a, a concrete class we can't create an, a new abstract class, so that, that abstract AB equals new abstract class would be uh, nonsensical, you cannot do that. Um, we then use concrete classes to complete the impl implementation, so we then inherit from an abstract class to make a concrete class, and then we can make objects of that. Uh, subclasses can ignore superclass methods if they wish, they don't have to use them unless they are abstract. If there's an abstract method specified by a superclass, then the subclass must override that method, because um, that's the whole thing. So that's abstract classes and concrete classes. Now we're just going to consider multiple inheritance. So sometimes um, we need to have multiple inheritance. We'll explain this in a second. Um, some, some languages allow it and some languages don't. Java kind of allows it. It allows it that it, you can use multiple interfaces, but you can't have uh, multiple extends. And we'll, we'll look at that in a second. Um, so let's just consider this idea here. Here we have a class hierarchy and we could say that all of those animals there, the rabbits and foxes and ants, they all inherit certain animal traits and they're of type animal. However, there are also types which can be drawn on the screen. Okay, so you've got types of an animal and types which can be drawn on the screen. So really, we wanted to inherit some things which something drawable on the screen might also have. So that's two, um, two things which it might need to inherit as well. Another example would be if you consider the um, 
uh, if you consider, say, uh, the David Cameron, you could say that he is of type Prime Minister, but you could also say he is of type Father, and he's also of type citizen. Now all of those inherit very different things, but he, he, he does inherit all of those things, so you need to have multiple inheritance and many, many ideas. What we say then is we can use multiple um, implements, so we can have multiple interfaces, but we can only have one um, extends. So let's have a look at interfaces. Now interfaces um, are similar to abstract classes, um, in the fact that they have abstract methods. The difference is, is all effectively all of the methods in an interface are abstract. So there is no body to any of the code. And none of the methods actually do anything. They just specify a certain type and they specify certain methods which need to be overridden um, in the uh, any class which inherits from it. So implementing classes do not inherit code. Um, they are subtypes of the interface type, so we can use polymorphism. So we can do things like create array lists full of drawable objects if they were if we in implemented an interface type. Um, we can be statically created, so we're allowed to do this interface A. However, we cannot be dynamically created, so A equals a new interface. We can't do that. Uh, all methods are abstract, so subtypes must override all methods. That's the important bit. Um, all methods are abstract, no constructors, all methods are public as well, and all fields are public, static, and final. So what it really does um, in interface is it gives you a structure of a code as opposed to giving you an implementation of a code. So it allows us to use in polymorphism, but it doesn't um, really help much in code reuse. Again, the main focus is really on interfaces is to use um, a structure your code and also to uh, allow polymorphism. So let's have a hypothetical example of an interface here. Consider a two-dimensional Star Wars game. Clearly a lot of work to develop, so having a structure for it might be useful. We could recognize on the screen there that if this was all moving, you would have types on the screen which need to move. You would also then have different types which need to inherit from each other. So for example, um, the start, the X-Wing, uh, X-Wing spaceships on the screen there, they would inherit similar things that the TIE Fighter things would inherit in terms of you know the the, um, it, the the aircraft needs a pilot and needs to have certain things to do with its, uh, the fact that it's a spaceship. But then it also needs to inherit from things which move on the screen. So both will need to move in certain ways, um, so they'll need to inherit in that. So there's, you can see there's a multiple inheritance problem occurring here. So let's consider our main game then. So I've created an empty main game really. It doesn't really do anything, it just provides a structure. So in the main game method um, of the main Star Wars game, or of, a, of, a, of an idea here, um, you may have some kind of while loop, um, and it will create lots of TD object, two dimensional objects on the screen in the game, and then these objects will contain various bits and pieces to do with, with those objects. So, um, and then we'll also, uh, have things on the screen which need to move. Um, so every version of the while loop, everything on the screen will, will move. Um, so a way to do this would be maybe to traverse a collection of multiple types and all of those types will move on the screen. So we could say therefore that our, inter our, um, our game might look a little bit like this. We could have an abstract spaceship because you can't have um, an abstract spaceship it's just an idea of a spaceship. In the spaceship you're going to have things like number of engines which are on the spaceship, so the specific spaceship things. We can see here that it extends things on screen, so the things on screen class is just something which is stored on the screen. The spaceship then inherits some bits and pieces from that, and then you've got a TIE fighter which inherits from the spaceship, and an X-wing that inherits from the spaceship. Things on the screen don't necessarily move, however the spaceship and uh, any, anything on the screen which is a spaceship will move. Therefore, it has to inherit from the um, movable interface. In the, uh, the movable interface, all it says is the uh, whichever type inherits from this will be able to move. So let's have a look at the game as to what would happen. You then create an array list of uh, type movable, then you're going to add everything on the screen which needs to move to that, and things on screen that need to move. Uh, what we're going to do then is we're going to create, this is the very start of the game, so we're just going to create a simple spaceship called Vader's TIE Fighter. 
kind of, of, of type spaceship. If we can imagine, we're going to create lots and lots of different um, ships here. We'll then set all that up and running. Add the things that move into, um, add the Vader's TIE fighters into the things that move, plus all the other ships which we, we would create in the future. And then we have the main, main, main game that then goes through each um, of the objects within the array list um, of TIE movable and then moves all of those. But remember, for those objects to be in that um, movable array list, they must have a draw method. So they must um, implement the, um, the interface uh, movable. So that's a little example there of maybe a structure. So now what we could do is then we can then introduce more spaceships um, and have all that um, working. Okay, so that's one example. Uh, one example then is to maybe consider the collection hierarchy. So um, we've looked at our uh, collections, so we've looked at our sets and our lists. Um, we've also looked at maps as well. And um, we'll see that these inherit from the collection um, uh, super uh, interface there where the collection has got certain things. Now one of the things which is going to be required from all of these collections no matter what type it is is the add method. So that add method will be specified as abstract and obviously it needs to be abstract because it's an in, in an interface but we, the idea of add will be very very different in a hash set than would be in an array list. So at the array list and at the hash set level, then we actually do the implementation of adding. But we say in the collection at the collection level that anything can be a collection as long as you can add something to it. And then all the other methods uh, adds just an example. All the other methods within the collection um, interface. So here it is. Here here's the interface list. Uh, and again, uh, the array list and linked lists they need to implement the list interface. So again, uh, just to recap then, to reuse code we have extends um, and ex uh, um, abstracts and extends and abstracts for polymorphism as well. When we are considering polymorphism we can use interfaces uh, and we can implement these interfaces. However, um, interfaces don't really solve our reuse of code um, problem. Um, that's really just done through extends and, and abstracts. Final thing to talk about for this particular chapter is the class class. The class class is just a, a useful um, uh, class. We've looked at the objects, um, we've looked at um, working with particular objects where um, we, ne we can also work with specific classes as well. One of the useful um, methods is the get class method, which will actually return the class which you're working with. Um, and then we can work out what classes we're working with um, and then we can call the get name for that to get the actual class we're working with. So that's a useful thing which is um, uh, which, which can be useful when uh, working with multiple different classes and um, multiple different types. So that's the, the class class. Uh, if you want any more information then uh, do have a look at the book. I'd recommend you reading further into the actual simulation but again not a great deal of time for this particular chapter um, that we're covering this week um, but otherwise I'll see you in the lesson.